Coming up on Studios America, Jason Buttrell is here with an update on Israel's war with Hamas. Those evil Israelis starting a war again. We'll also get a preview of the newest Glenn Beck special. Top scientists in the United States are calling for a deeper investigation into COVID-19's mysterious origins. If only a stupid little TV program had done that, oh, you know, I don't know, like over a year ago. I mean, go back and watch this called the Wuhan Conspiracy. Uh, and also, I will say, although I'm getting up here in years at, an, at a hip aching 27. Now, wow, I can't believe it's been that long. I still love to play with Lego bricks, building houses, bridges, monsters, and entire spectrums of sexuality. Make me feel like a kid all over again, even with the exorbitant Lego price tags. So let's put the pieces together and do commercializing sexuality. Today's show is absolutely 100% not about Legos. It's true, not about Legos at all, partially because Legos are not a thing. It's true, did you know that? Legos are not a thing. This is a tweet that Lego has posted before, it's a couple years ago, but they explain the point here. Uh, here it is, it says, Lego is always an adjective, so Lego bricks. Lego elements, Lego sets, etc. Never, ever Legos. The plural of Lego is not Legos. The plural of Lego is Lego. Now, this is, of course, completely unusable in the world because my kids have Lego and they're on the ground and I say, pick up your Lego. They're going to pick up one of them. The rest of them are going to be on the ground for me to step on in the middle of the night. I have to say... Kids, pick up your Legos, or my new carpet is made of plastic, essentially. That's how that works. So make sure to keep saying Legos because it pisses off Lego and their Legos. They do have a new set out, though, and I think it's something that you might be interested in because there's a larger point here than just what the plural of Lego is. They have a new set called Everyone is Awesome. Here it is. It's a uh, gay-themed Lego set. <laughs> I just don't know how else to put it. I am a little, you can see it's rainbow colors. Um, can we get the picture back one more time? Because this is, uh, one thing you'll notice on here is in the very bottom left-hand corner, it's a little tough to see, but it says it's 18 plus. Now, <laughs> I don't know. Are there a lot of 18 and older using Legos? I guess there are. And by the way, I said Legos. That's right, Lego. Um, maybe there are. I don't know. Um, we do have, I mean, this is Lego, right? This is Lego the company. You've seen their logo a zillion times everywhere. It's, it really is sort of central to the growing up experience here. In, uh, you know, you want to be a kid in America? You're going to know that logo. Well, gay, Lego. Well, now we have, of course, a new logo. It's not Lego. It's Gago. Mm -hmm. Now they're Gagos. So today's show is a little bit about Lego and a little bit more about Gagos. So you can go buy your set of Gagos uh, right now. Now, we know that sex sells when it comes uh, to products. That's been something that's been known for a very long time. But this is a little bit different. This is commercializing your identity, your sexual identity, commercializing your sexuality. Is that something we need in this country? I will say that this Lego set is not exactly impressive to me. I will say, you know, you kind of look at the, can we get the range of Legos here? This is what the whole set looks like all put together. It's, you know, uh, black, brown, you got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, then I think teal, and then <laughs> white and pink at the end. One thing you kind of see while looking at this is, is that the black and brown kind of like, the way they have it set up is like black and brown is most important. And then in the very back corner there, you got white and pink. So if you're a white person or a woman, geez, you're nothing. You're at the back of the line, front of the line, black and brown, making a wonderful statement of inclusiveness by dismissiveness. Uh, you know, I, this is like the worst Lego set I've ever seen. This is the top view. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's certainly no Lego Death Star. 
it just looks boring, doesn't it? I mean, I, I don't know. Is there much going on? Uh, I mean, it doesn't look. I mean, look at the, look at this picture. This is this is in the, they 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 released this like this is what it's like to play with these Legos. I, I mean, look at this picture. Um, do we have the picture? Thank you. Um, uh, that doesn't look. Does it look remotely challenging to build? I mean, it just seems super, super basic. Next, next picture. I mean, look at all the fun that you're going to have with this set where, you know, a bunch of characters sort of stand on the same one peg by themselves, not really doing anything because there's nothing to do. It's just a bunch of colors. It's more of a statement than it's an actual uh, toy. Um, I will say this. You've got... Basically all, do we have the top, this, this next view here is, is interesting to me because you can kind of see how it's supposed to be built. Um, actually, the one from the top here. Uh, uh, I don't know if we, we lost that one. Went have lost one in the order here. But you, what you can kind of see here, yeah, that's fine. You see pieces sort of like on their designated slots all separate. It's kind of like they're all sort of segregated from each other. And I guess that's where we're going in our society right now. Um, now, if you have actually a, kind of an actual rainbow... A rainbow of, that's kind of the inclusive thing. And, and they, they never go far enough anymore. You have this sort of rainbow of different colors and races and genders. And a rainbow used to be the inclusive signal, single, uh, symbol, but like right now, a rainbow isn't enough. A rainbow doesn't have, do we have the side view? Uh, the actual rainbow is not black or brown, no white or pink in an actual rainbow. So all those places would be left out. We can't, ha a rainbow is not inclusive enough for these gay goes. And if you kind of look at the individual characters, they're a little bizarre. Uh, what's the, let's see, the dark blue one. We have the dark blue one. This one is, uh, <laughs> he has Conan O'Brien hair. Is that a whole, does Conan O'Brien hair get its own color in the Gago set? Yes, it does. Or uh, the light blue one seems to be wearing a helmet. Now, I don't know if he's an athlete or Perhaps, uh, you know, I mean, maybe they may be going the diversity through d disability sort of route uh, with this one. We don't we don't know. Or we have the purple one. And this is clearly I mean, it's just John Travolta hair. Look at this. It's John Travolta from Hairspray. <laughs> Looks just like it. I don't know if that's what they're going for, but fits right in the gay goat motif, I think. Um, why did they make a set of gay Legos? Gay goes. Why? Well, we have a word from the designer who kind of talked about it. He was um, a, uh, uh, he grew up, he's, he's gay himself, and he grew up, as he points out, a gay child. And it was very difficult, and he wanted to have toys that, you know, made for more inclusivity. And, like, there's no one out there who thinks, gosh, I, I want a kid to be upset. I want a kid to be sad. I want a kid to feel like he doesn't belong. No one wants to do that, but it's just the appropriate way of doing this. And, and he kind of goes through all the colors here as well. He says, we've made sure to include black and brown colors to represent the broad diversity of everyone within the LGBTQIA plus community. We've also added in the pale blue, white, and pink to support and embrace the trans community as well. So I guess the pink wasn't a woman. I don't know. I can't. I don't know how this works. I purposely put the purple drag queen as a clear nod to the fabulous side of the LGBTQIA plus community. I hope it's a joy to build and look uh, and, and to, a joy to look at, and hopefully will bring a lot of joy to people's lives. It may. And look, it's a stupid toy. I don't care really if they make it. Uh, you know, who cares, right? Who really cares about this? There has to be something larger here, and, and there is. So I guess my question here is, doesn't this kind of teach us to divide ourselves even more? If we're always thinking about these characteristics all the time. Let me give the uh, gay Congo picture, because it looks like they're in a gay Congo line. Uh, why, why is it necessary to have these identifying characteristics always so out front. And it's not just Legos. There's even breakfast cereals now that are making LGBTQIA plus statements. Do we have this the breakfast cereal picture? Look at this. This is all together from Kellogg's, which I guess is, you know, if you want to make your sexuality statements through breakfast cereal, well, good for you. You have that available to you right now. This is just... Another example of this, is it not? I don't, I don't care if you, you make your gay cereal. You make, I just, I didn't think we had straight cereal. I didn't think Tony the Tiger, I didn't really think much about his sexuality, frankly. Kind of just thought he was 
making frosted flakes. That's frosted flakes, right? He just thought, well, yeah, that's right. Okay, good. I mean, it's been a while. My point is that this isn't what it's supposed to be. Let me give this. This is the front view. This is the head-on view from, of Gay Goes. This is what it looks like. And I want you to look closely at this picture here for a second. Because if you look closely, what you'll notice about these, yes, they're all the colors of the rainbow, plus a bunch of others that they did to apparently give more inclus inclusivity. But look at the faces. All of the faces are blank. I mean, even regular boring old Legos that you get in any set would have faces on them. They normally do. These are all just blank faces. And it kind of works perfectly with where we're headed. You are not your sexuality. What you do with your private parts is not who you are. It might be a small part of who you are, but neither gay or straight or trans are identities. You don't identify as gay. You identify as an individual who might also be gay. Collectivists want you to identify as nothing more than a faceless member of a group. You're gay, you're white, you're Hispanic, you're whatever. And perhaps maybe building blocks are an area that could exist, I'm just suggesting this, maybe they could exist outside the minute to minute thought about our privates. Maybe breakfast cereal could be delicious and crunchy without having to insert genitals into the meal plan. This is America. We are individuals, not faceless members of a group that make bland statements of identity in their children's toys and breakfast cereals. It's 2021. You can have sex with whomever you please, assuming they are willing and able to consent. But perhaps we can have a society that is just a little less obsessed with surface characteristics like skin color, gender, and how you enjoy using your genitals. Maybe, just maybe, we could aim a little higher. Are you trying to buy or sell a home right now? If you are, you know it's a, it's a weird time. We're coming out of COVID. People are still weird about coming into indoor spaces. Uh, they don't know whether to wear their mask or not. They don't know what the rules are. And at the same time, the, uh, the real estate market is exploding. I was just reading a stat that there are now more real estate agents than there are real estate listings. <laughs> I mean... That's incredible. You better get the right one. There's a lot of agents out there. Find the agent that is right for you. Be rest assured that you're going to be in the best hands of the most competent agents available. That's realestateagentsitrust.com. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go to make sure you find the most capable people in the industry who will see your transaction through to the very end. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go. Realestateagentsitrust.com. I want to bring in Jason Buttrell. He's a head writer and researcher for Glenn Beck of uh, the Glenn Beck program. You may have heard of this. Uh, Glenn's new special airs immediately after this program at 9 p.m. Eastern on Blaze TV. Uh, you don't want to miss it. It's called The New War on Terror. Innocent until proven conservative. Jason, thanks for stopping in. Thanks. A good title, by the way. That was mine. Huh? Yeah, was it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're, if it's good, you're supposed to give Glenn the credit. That's how this is oh, supposed to Oh, that's right. Yeah. If it sucks, Should it's your be fault. be trained by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me start with the special. Uh, first of all, you had Rand Paul in the special. Yeah. Um, you, you talked to him a little bit about, uh, I know this isn't necessarily the immediate focus of the special, but you did, I think, get into um, a little bit on the Wuhan uh, conspiracy, as they called it, that there was a leak from the lab and that's how COVID started. Yeah, kind of crazy how you can talk about that now. In fact, we did a, we did a special on this back when it was taboo. Like mm -hmm. you could not talk about this, you were getting kicked off social. So we were warned, we're like, we should probably not put this on YouTube. We usually put all our shows on YouTube and the, the platform. And so we just didn't put it on YouTube because we knew it was gonna, we were probably gonna get banned from YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now you, I, I think I saw something in Vox talking about it. Yeah. MSNBC, they're talking about it. CNN was talking about it the other day and hilariously blamed the Trump administration <laughs> for why that was never pursued. Yeah, that, that's Maggie Haberman uh, <laughs> and that one, former New York Times writer. She's like basically the main Trump, uh, you know, beat person over at the New York Times. And uh, white, chief White House correspondent is probably how I'm supposed to refer to that. And then uh, I was, now is over at CNN. And what I thought was interesting about that, because, you know, conservatives have beaten her up on that. And I think rightfully so. Like she's admitting something 
really terrible. But also, she is admitting it. It's an honest moment. She's basically saying, we didn't look at this because Trump said it. Yeah. That is the way the media existed for, for four years. For sure. On multiple topics mm -hmm. across a broad array of stuff. Um, yeah, Rand Paul said some interesting. You need to watch that, that interview tonight. Well, the whole show, but that interview, specifically that part. In fact, I think we're going to be putting up on social pretty soon. But he let a lot of stuff that I just not have heard about mm -hmm. um, go. And just for your viewers and listeners, too, I'm going to give a little exclusive exclusive. Okay, nice. Um, he talked about how a study, now he's privy to all the investigations that are going on. And he talked about part of that investigation where they tested, he said thousands of animals, including bats and everything, to um, to find out if there was any COVID in you know for in that area if, if if they had COVID, none of them had COVID in them. No bats, no nothing. Um, not only that, but they actually subjected the bats from there uh, to see how easily they could pick up COVID. None of them could pick up COVID. None of them. So it's just it just <laughs> I mean, the, the the evidence at this point again not confirming that it's a lab leak, but man, it makes me lean that way. I mean, it, it's, it seems, okay, this is how, this was my mindset back then. It's the same then as it is now. It, it's why wouldn't you consider that? Yeah, right. They wouldn't consider it. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems common sense. I'm 99% sure it came from that lab. Now, I'm not going to say that it was man-made. I don't think it was man-made. Right. Um, but what we, we showed in that show that um, they, the Chinese uh, Science Institute or whatever, they were putting out commercials of their main scientist that was going into those caves, mm -hmm. which, by the way, are about 400 to 600 miles away yep. from that area. Yep. They were going into those caves, finding the bats that, were, that had COVID, and they were bringing them back to the Wuhan lab to study. So we know that they were doing this. We know that uh, SARS had already escaped, I think, in 2002 mm -hmm. from that specific lab. Mm. We found a news report, again, in that show, um, that uh, they had already been caught doing this. So they know that they're, you know, lackadaisical enough to let this happen once. Why is it completely out of the realm of possibility that it happened again? Yeah, I mean, and, and it seems like the media really tried to, to limit this to two options, which was completely innocuous animal transmission or... Uh, the conservative philosophy, which is they, you know, Mao is still alive and he's in a lab and he's, you know, he's from scratch building viruses. It's neither one of those. I mean, the, the two in the middle are they were ju they just got it from this this cave, right? It, a bat had it in one of these caves and they were they were testing it and working with it and it, it wound up infecting someone. Totally a plausible uh, answer here, by the way, especially given the idea of, of uh, minimal security on these facilities. Uh, and then in addition to that, there's the gain of function research where they're trying to actively, they took a, a, a normal coronavirus from a bat and actively tried to make it more infectious to, you know, for reasons that might actually be good, like this stuff does occasionally uh, help us or at least could potentially help us at times. But it got out of control because, again, they weren't in a facility that was uh, was secure enough and it, it escapes. It's totally plausible. The, the evidence at this point, I think, overwhelmingly points in that direction. I, I've seen no evidence at all. In fact, uh, the, 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 the most respected medical, you know, uh, think tanks out there, uh, that was, I think it was the Lancet, I believe, mm -hmm. in the very beginning. They were one of the their researchers, were one of the main ones that were like, we can't find evidence that the, you know, that the virus was even in. Uh, yeah. that, that little market. Uh, they couldn't figure that out. Then they're finding all these other cases in multiple different parts of the country where COVID-19 was popping up. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it, it seems <laughs> there's de we definitely haven't heard the end of that story. Uh, the problem is, I know Biden, uh, he, you know, he nixed a public, the, the public investigation uh, into the, the origins, uh, you know, in the lab leak theory. Uh, he nixed that today. Um, that way, I want to I want to stop on that because I saw this headline and I didn't I, you know it was right before I came on the show I didn't click on the headline I just happened to see it and the way it was presented in the media was that basically Biden was taking this seriously and he was starting a new commission to look into this which is a big announcement if the Democratic president is also on board looking at this that's not what was happening no because he, he so he he nixed that one that the Trump started that investigation that the Trump one, the, the Trump uh, president Trump started mm -hmm. so he did that but then what he did do is yes the investigation is, is is continuing but with the intelligence agencies the intelligence agencies are continuing it so what does that mean that means that he never has to disclose the information mm -hmm. that they come up with let's say they identify China and that's what they're scared of they're scared of publicly outing China and saying okay we did our investigation yes it came from that lab sorry but here's the evidence it doesn't lie 
they don't want to publicly say that. Mm. Not only because of business interests, right. but I don't think they even know how to deal with it. What are you going to do? We're basically a John Cena government. Oh, exactly. Exactly right. It's, it's, I mean, I tell you what, you know, China, they're getting a good return on their investment in the Biden administration. That's mm. what they're getting. Jeez. All right, let me take it to another part here, but related. Because I think a, a big public commission with a splashy announcement at the end would be really a good idea when it comes to did China release COVID and kill millions of people around the globe? I think that would be worth it. Would they pursue it if it was if Russia? Imagine that. Mm. If, if, if this was centered on Russia, they would be all over it. Yeah. All over it mm. because of China. And that tells you exactly there's business interests in China, not in Russia. That's why they will never talk about China, but they'll blame Russia all day long. Unbelievable. And there's no political benefit to them right. in saying China is bad. There is a political benefit, however, in saying Republicans yes. are bad. Yes. And that's why they want this January 6th commission. Mm. It's hard for me. When I look at this and I, and I think to myself, this is uh, nothing but politics. Yeah. I, myself, have questions and I would like answers sure. on certain things that happened that day. Like, for example, why it took so long for the National Guard to come out. I would like to know what the hell was going on. Um, that's not to say that it's Trump's fault. It's not to say that Trump's innocent out of it. I would like to know what the answer is on that one. And there's several other questions leading up. Why was the security so crappy? Why was the planning so crappy? All of this should be investigated. A big, splashy, partisan political battle through a commission is not the way to do it, though. No, um, I think it's clear what they're, tr they're looking for, a political weapon of mass destruction on this. Mm. And my fear, and a few other people that I've, ta I've been talking to, is that this is just a way for them to pretty much go ever after whoever they want that might have anything at all as, you know, that can be perceived as, you know, some kind of ideology that runs in parallel with some of these other groups. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you're, 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 you're uh, you know, you're, you're pro-life. You know, you're against abortion. Oh, well, so is this group. And so is this group that was at this place. <laughs> right. You know, and they just yeah. play this like, what is it, 16 degrees of Kevin Bacon. And then you're <laughs> all lumped into the same. I think 16 degrees of Kevin Bacon would be a very easy game. I believe <laughs> yeah. it was seven degrees. Is it seven? <laughs> Isn't it? Or six degrees? Something like this. Six I think or seven. Six. I can't yeah. remember. No what one knows. Else? I don't know. Um, but, but that's what I fear that they're moving mm -hmm. towards. But, I mean, come on. They've already had 400 arrests uh as it pertained to uh the january 6 riot yeah they've got another hundred coming down the pike soon so that right there tells you that they're not, what else are they going to find yeah it strikes well, me as like a good way of investigating it right you have 400 individuals they're going to go through trials on all of them good way of finding the truth right right add on so maybe maybe some competent journalism would be nice this Throw that in there. Oh, and speaking of common, uh, competent journalism that's, that that goes to one of the questions we pose uh, several questions uh within this um within this show. One of them is why are they hoarding over 14,000 hours of CCTV footage mm. within the Capitol building? Show us. Yeah. Like you, you're talking about all this stuff. Why are you showing us videos of independent journalists that just brought in phone cameras? Yeah. yeah. Why are you just showing us that? And there was another there was another mm, uh, piece of footage point. that just came out last week of uh, one of the one of the people inside and he's talking very peacefully with one of the cops. Yeah. And the cop was like, "Hey, you guys do your thing." But no, this is a sacred building, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then he gets on the bullhorn and is like, guys, this is, this is sacred, you know, we've got to be peaceful and they're going to let us stay here. Why wouldn't they show that? Because if they showed that, you couldn't, as Biden did, stand in front of the country and say this was the worst thing to happen to us since the Civil War. Right. I mean, it right? obviously wasn't the first thing that happened to us since the Civil War. <laughs> right. It's a completely ridiculous. But I mean, it was not good. And like, right. you know, I think you could say, you know, you're, you're a police officer in there. You're making a judgment as to what's the best outcome at that point. They're already in the building. You know, you mean you you try to keep the crowd calm, right? I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And it doesn't mean that the people who were in there were right. But it does, I think you're right. There's a lot of questions that are un unanswered. Another one I would like to know about uh, January 6th is more about who actually shot Ashley Babbitt. Now, look, I am not the one uh, I'm not one of these people who thinks she was murdered by evil police officers. If you're trying to climb in through a freaking window with a gun pointed at you inside the Capitol while representatives are on the floor in the middle of a riot, you're probably going to get shot. But it's amazing. We don't know who this person is. This yeah. is a massive national story. We know every freaking police officer who shoots some random person, um, a, a, you know, who's holding a gun, pointing it at officers, trying to run them over. It, if, if one is black and one is white, we know everything about their life. But we know nothing about this person who, who took the shot. Right. It's and very interesting. It is. And that was the only shot that was fired that entire day. Yeah. Um, that was in a Senate uh, hearing, uh, I think it was last week. Mm -hmm. there were, they, they, they confiscated and found absolutely zero guns, and the only shot that was fired was the one that killed Ashley Babbitt. Or as the FBI counterterrorism called her, that lady. Um, <laughs> during, seriously, that's what she called her down there. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, there's so many questions. You talked about competent journalism. I mean, they're not being. Instead, January 6th spawned all of these different studies on how there's a rise in right-wing terror. And the Washington Post did this really hard-hitting investigation on the rise of right-wing terror. And um, I got, I just instantly I saw that and I was like, this has got to be BS. Like, I, I don't, there's not right wing terrorists falling out of the sky. Like, yeah. you're not tripping over them, you know, in your driveway when you walk out <laughs> to get your paper in the morning. Like, True. what is going on? But they want us to think that that's how many there yes. are. So w we looked into that. We found the data set that they were given. And I just l went, I looked through them. And I, I think I looked at the first 10 and laugh so hard, I almost didn't look through the rest of it. But seriously, like one of the one of the cases that they attributed to right wing terror was a Hispanic male that stabbed a Chinese man, and it was over COVID stuff. And not once could they find out the Hispanic male's political affiliation. They attributed it to right wing terror. Mm. That was just within the first ten, right? There was tons more of those, but they're labeling those as right wing terror. Now you got to wonder what's the agenda behind that. They want. Uh, they want to make the appearance that there is this, you know, this radical rise of, of you know, far right and white supremacists. They want you to believe that so hard. Mm -hmm. January 6th gave them the, the ammunition to say, okay, this, was, this, is, this is the direction we're going. We're going to root them out and we're going to stop them. You got to ask those questions, why? What are they, what's their end game on this? And I think it's to lump us all in eventually. You can oh, go yeah. after them on, t on, on, they can go after the blaze. They can go after us on social media. They can shut your ideas down. As long as some way they can tie you to those people, then you're screwed. Very true. Let me talk uh, quickly. We've got a couple more minutes here. Um, the Biden administration has a, uh, a Blinken in, um, uh, I always want to say Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Every time, I, the only thing I can think of when I hear Blinken is the Abe Lincoln uh, joke. Um, so uh, Blinken is in Israel, I guess, trying to smooth things over. How's that going? Well... <sighs> So most of the most of the violence, well, pretty much all of the violence has stopped now. Yep. It's, but it, it's that doesn't mean that it's over. Uh, with the policies that the Biden administration is pursuing, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Why is it going to happen again? Well, it's a political win for Hamas and people like Iran or countries like Iran every single time because the media and governments like ours that are absolutely ballless uh, refuse to condemn th those that are uh, um, to blame for this, and that's terrorist organizations like Hamas. Um, I even classify the Palestinian Authority into that because their roots go back to the PLO, Yasser Arafat. Sure. Um, it, yeah, Abbas, the guy that's still the chairman, he was right there with them from the beginning. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even separate them. I think they're all terrorists. Um, but they refuse to, to blame them. Now, the, the Trump administrations, this was their approach to this. They were going to call the terrorists terrorists not give them millions and millions of dollars mm -hmm. to get even more uh, deadly. Instead, they were going to uh, um, get make peace between Israel and some of the Arab kingdoms. Mm -hmm. So let's attack it from there. Well, the Obama administration said that could not work. Yep. The only way it would work is if we concentrated on you know, the Palestinian Authority and, and, and Hamas and help them create their two-state solution. That was the only way, and then come down hard on Israel. Well, terror reigned. Uh, Middle East was always on fire. The only time it went down was when Trump did this, went this new approach. Mm -hmm. Really nothing. And there wasn't a lot that happened in the four years when he was president. None. And there wasn't lots of, a lot of violence. Uh, there was historic peace, mm -hmm. to the contrary. Mm -hmm. and peace broke out like crazy. Mm -hmm. now, they go in their, now their direction is to double down on what was making it bad in the first place. Yeah. Blinken, is, this is what he wants to do. He wants to help, and Biden wants to help rebuild Gaza. Now they want to send in hundreds of millions of dollars to help them do this. Any money you put into Gaza is going to Hamas, which means dead Israelis. That is the hard, blunt truth. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. um, you're but paying for dead Israelis. That's what you're doing. Um, I, it, it's just, I can't imagine. It's, it's, it's typical progressive ideology, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they propose something, they want to do something. Let's say the war on poverty. Let's say <laughs> no. Obamacare, whatever. It fails. So what do they do? Instead of saying, hey, let's try some different ideas. No, no, no. Let's double down on our bad ideas. And if that doesn't work, let's triple down. If that doesn't work, let's quadruple and, con and continue the cycle. That's, that's how this works. Now they're doing this with the Middle East. It's uh, the same thing is going to happen. It's not going to work. I mean, it's amazing. They have the they, they have the outline. They have the, you know the path that was working. Mm -hmm. But they're throwing it away. Why? Because it's Trump's leg legacy. Yeah, it really is. It does seem to be only, that, 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 that simple. Um, I will say, if you want to have respect on the international stage and don't want um, a, a harsh response when you fire thousands of rockets into another country, one thing you might want to do is not elect Hamas.
Right. Maybe don't vote an internationally recognized terrorist group in as your government. And maybe you'd get a little bit more respect than you think you should have. I mean, I don't know. It's just a crazy idea. I'm just throwing stuff out there at this point. It's all just theory. That's all it is, <laughs> theory. Jason Buttrell, head writer and researcher for Glenn Beck. Make sure to stay tuned after this show for Glenn and Jason's new special, J The uh, New War on Terror, Innocent Until Proven Conservative, Jason Buttrell's title completely all his, <laughs> airing at 9 p.m. Eastern. And of course, the best way to watch it with your very own Blaze TV account, head to blazetv.com slash stew, enter the promo code stew. Why? Because that's how they know you like this stupid show and you'll save 10 bucks. Jason, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So Seth Rogen is in the news. He made some statements on cancel culture that a lot of people are tossing around. I think people really like them, and there's some sense to his comments here. I think he it makes some, you know, there's some sort of like common sense view here that he takes, but there's, I think, a little bit more to it than what he's saying. Well, let's listen to his comments on cancel culture. Seth Rogen. Saying terrible things is bad. So if you said something terrible, then that's something you should confront in some way, shape, or form. Um, I don't think that's cancel culture. That's you saying something terrible if if, if that's what you've done. You know? Well, you've got to <laughs> now. Yeah, I get what he's saying there, right? Like if you said something bad, it's either you know it's either good or bad. And you know if you said something bad, you should uh, you should he said you should apologize for it. Or if you and if you uh, if you made a joke that's aged terribly, accept it. If you don't think it's aged terribly, then say that. Well, yeah. The problem is no matter what which one of those two you choose, you still get canceled. The problem is not whether you know what you should say in, in response to it. I think it would be a pretty sensible place that if you said. Okay, look, I made a joke 10 years ago that was completely acceptable at the time. Now people are bringing it up to me again, and I don't, you know, it doesn't really feel as good, doesn't age, didn't age well for whatever reason. I don't really like that joke now. If you say that, you get canceled. If you say, you know what, I made a joke 10 years ago and it was fine then, and you know what, I think it still sticks, to, uh, stands up today, then you also get canceled. So both of his options end up with you not having a job, depending on how bad the offense is, of course. He also said um, it's all about... Um, criticism. He said, uh, uh, criticism is one of the things that goes along with being an artist. And if you don't like that, then don't be a comedian anymore. Well, yeah, but it's not the criticism. No one's saying you can't criticize someone for the joke that they're making. The point is, should it be something that, that ruins their career? Should it be something that they're no longer allowed to be booked in venues and they're no longer ever called for a television show ever again? That's the idiotic part of this. It's not, I mean, criticism is great. I think it's fine to be able to look back at a joke and say, eh, this one worked well, this one didn't. There's nothing wrong with that. The point is the ridiculous, incoherent consequence structure that seems to go along mostly with things that appear to be conservative um, in some way. So anyway, we'll uh, go more into cancel culture coming up. I, I also got to give you this from the WNBA. I've been watching occasionally the NBA. I'll, it will pop on my screen. Uh, not the WNBA. That never happens. Uh, but the, 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 the NBA will pop on my screen. And of course, they have to run commercials first telling me how much I should be talking about George Floyd. Obviously, that's the number one uh, 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 thing that the NBA does is try to convince you to talk, talk about race. It's not actually a basketball league. It's a race conversation that dribbles occasionally. That's the NBA. Uh, but they've been running these ads for the WNBA. We have a uh, still from one of them here. Uh, if you can't read it, it says... The only problem with the WNBA is that you're not watching. Now, I don't know what to think about this. Part of me thinks they're gaslighting here. Like, this is such a terrible slogan. The only problem with the WNBA is that you're not watching just sounds pathetic. It sounds like Job in, Amer in Arrested Development when he had his little gathering of magicians and he got all pissed off and he held up a sign and he said... We demand to be taken seriously. <laughs> That's kind of what we're what the WNBA is doing here. We we can't believe you won't watch us. Obviously, you've made a judgment and thought maybe the quality of the sport is not all that good. But no, the, the it's not the quality of the sport. It's your fault, audience. It's your fault. You are the bad person for not watching us. And at some point, I think we should just pass a law that says you must watch the equal amount of women's sports as men's sports. That's about as coherent as Title IX is in the way it's utilized. Let's go down that road. That makes a lot of sense. It's, it's one of these things where it just seems more and more ridiculous by the day. Uh, but the one thing I will say 
about this whole transgendered thing. There's a way, there's a path here, right, where transgendered males continue to outcompete uh, biological females in, in women's sports. And the whole thing just kind of dissolves and there are no more women's sports. And normally people come out and they say, that's the reason, you know, why this can't keep continuing to happen. It's also a pretty good reason to let it happen. Just saying. Back in a second. If you're trying to stay fit and healthy, you've probably discovered by now, as I have, that it can be a little difficult. So much good food in the world. I mean, you just have great snacks. They're always terrible for you, no matter what they are. But Built Bar has changed that dynamic. Uh, it's going to change the way you think about protein bars. Built Bars are high in protein. They are high in fiber. They are low in calories. They are low in carbs. And we're talking like three to five net carbs. So if you're in the keto world or one of these low carb diets, you know that's super, super low. So a lot of foods, though, can claim that. What about the taste? Well, they come in a variety of flavors. We're talking uh, cookies and cream, caramel brownie, raspberry, and much, much more. Um, and they actually go for taste first. They say, OK, look. Let's get something that tastes really good. And then we'll worry about whether it's healthy. Um, and that's what they've done. They have the, uh, the a really healthy treat for you. I'm talking like 130 calories a bar. BuiltBar.com. Use promo code STU15. My wife eats these literally every single day. Save 15% off your next order with the promo code STU15. It's STU15 at BuiltBar.com. BuiltBar.com. Thank you so much for being on Team Do America with me. I'm so grateful. I've drafted up a brand new merch item for you, one that I've been thinking about and excited about for a long time. We just talked about the WNBA, but with no further ado, I present the Don't Be an Idiot, Don't Be a LeBron t-shirt. It's excellent advice that anyone should be proud to put on their chest. Or maybe you want to see the logo and remember how much LeBron sucks. Of course, in that case, may I recommend the Don't Be an Idiot, Don't Be a LeBron mug. <laughs> so you think about this when you're at work, one side of the mug says, don't be an idiot. And that really applies to anyone you're working with. Uh, you probably have a lot of idiots around you. And then you always have the statement, you can always turn around the mug to the other side, don't be LeBron. So don't be an idiot, don't be a LeBron. That's your mug, drink your coffee or your straight bourbon right out of this bad boy. When you try to remember, how do I insult LeBron James? How did he, you know, you remember when he ruined the NBA? How can I, how can I crystallize that in my memory? This mug, this t-shirt, get them both at stewdoesmerch.com. I will say, I just popped into my head that the Dallas Mavericks are up 2-0 in their series. And the Lakers, of course, they're obviously going to win their series because, I mean, do they ever play any team uh, that uh, is any good? Uh, so they're going to wind up, uh, of course, Chris Paul is hurt. Phoenix is probably going to lose that series. If they do, I think we'd have LeBron here in Dallas. Maybe we have to wear the Don't Be a LeBron t-shirt to the game. That would be fun. I think he'd like it. He'd li it has his name on it. So maybe he'd enjoy that. We'll get into that in just a minute. By the way, he's going to give you a lot of advice on social justice and what it means to bring America together. He constantly is doing that, as, as is Portland. The entire city of Portland, they were commemorating the riots uh, in, in, uh, about George Floyd by um, you know, of course, just rioting again. It's been a one year anniversary since Floyd died. It was, I think, yesterday. And so the commemoration in Portland was yet another riot because that's a really good way of handling your problems. If you burn things, they can't hurt you anymore. I think that's the philosophy. Uh, Portland has been basically in a state of riot ever since like 1990, but it's really bad lately over the past couple of years. It's an embarrassment. Uh, and it's like, it's like one of these in, in Turkmenistan, you know, one of my favorite countries. There's this giant crater in the middle of like the desert and they were mining for, you know, digging and doing all the things they do to get uh, uh, natural gas because natural gas is like their only product. So they got in there. At one point, the Russians or the Soviets were in there. This crater kind of fell in, lit on fire. And there's just like this moon crater that's on fire and it's on fire all the time. There's never... Uh, they can't figure out how to put it out. It's just constantly there all the time. Whenever you're going through the desert, you can go visit this giant flammable crater and it's never really going away. That's kind of Portland. 
it's just kind of constantly on fire and there's no seemingly any there's no seem, seem to be any way to put it out. Certainly no one in charge seems to think it's, it's any sort of priority to put it out. A minor problem, you might think. Uh, and this is just kind of the way we act now. It's like, you know, I want a, a government that is going to be less intrusive. I don't want the government in my life, as you know. But when people are committing crimes, I want the government to stand, stand up and say, you know, do what they have to do to make things right. I want a police force that can, I don't know, actually police. Right? That's not what's happening in Portland. And now it's not seemingly what's happening in any part of our government. We're seeing what we talked earlier about what was going on in Israel with Iran and all of that with Hamas. It's a weak posture. We're constantly posturing weakness. That's because wokeness is weakness. That's what it is. And we are going more and more down that road. I got to give you this from John Cena. I know we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but it's just I can't get over the symbolism of it. Here's John Cena apologizing to the state of China, the communist government of China, over his terrible crime of calling Taiwan what it is, a country. Watch. Now, here he is speaking Mandarin Chinese, which he does relatively well. I mean, I, I mean apparently he knew it. But like, what on, I, I, honestly, what on earth would the Chinese government have to say to get John Cena, a big movie star, to completely emasculate himself and apologize for nothing? I have absolutely no idea, but it must have been a lot of money. Um, a lot of money must have been on the line for that one. Back in a second. So Texas high school is facing backlash after administrators told half of the graduating class to that they were going to be suspended from school. Now, why did this happen? They did a school prank. There's a senior prank sort of uh, tradition around this country. I don't know if anyone knows about it, um, but basically they just did something pretty harmless. This is a quote from one of the uh, parents. It was a harmless senior prank that all of us parents knew 100 percent that was going on. They had planned as a group, you know, 40 students, which is half the senior class, to fork the field, which is putting plastic forks in the dirt. I, it's better than the first. When they said fork the field, I didn't know what was going on. It sounded pretty bad. But no, just some plastic forks in the field. Uh, they also had a couple balloons around. Uh, but to suspend all of these students over, well, you know, there wasn't any long-lasting violen uh, violence or vandalism or anything like that. There's a bunch of plastic forks that need to be picked up and a few balloons. Didn't seem like that big of a deal. Um, I will see. I mean, the parents seem pretty pissed off about it. I, I kind of hope the school district reverses course on their decision because in 40 sets of angry parents like kind of descending on the school, the administration will be forked. They will be truly forked. Uh, may have had a different meeting. Um, I will also tell you that an Indians pitcher, Zach Plesak, he broke his thumb. Now, normally I wouldn't laugh at someone breaking their thumb. However, he broke his thumb rather aggressively taking off his undershirt. I think he caught it on a chair. It was pretty swollen yesterday. We sent him for x-rays and he came back in the sixth inning. He had broken his thumb. Not a great, not a great, uh, a great sign for your season, honestly. And I will say, ladies and gentlemen, and this you should know this. As, as fans of the show, you're around here, you're in the Cool Kids Club, you're here in the last break of the show, you should know this is the reason I don't end each show by aggressively ripping off my shirt. I mean, I, I know that's what you want. I know it's what I want, but it's just too dangerous. It's an unfair world that we live in. We'll just have to make the best of it together. And we can do that, by the way. You could aggressively rip off your uh, LeBron shirt whenever you want. The shirt is available now. Make sure you pick it up. Don't be an idiot. Don't be a LeBron. Oh, people are going to love you for this one. Get it at stewdoesmerch.com. Mugs, shirts, all the rest.